All right, I see the red light. Um, here are the study terms for the first exam. And why don't we just kind of take them chapter by chapter and we'll deal with terms and then we'll jump back and get into articles. Have y'all got any questions about anything from any of these terms that are posted? Go ahead, Ashley. What is 111? 111, I think I actually changed that in the outline to like 115. And that's the number of peaceful presidential and midterm elections in American history. So I'll see if about changing that, or as long as it's the first line in the video, nobody will have turned it off yet. Go ahead. So specifically, what do we have to know about these details? Like, if it's a, do you have to define anything? Like, speak about define it. Um, maybe give me examples, but probably a better way of addressing this would be asking about specific terms, and then we can go through them that way. So if y'all will give me terms, let's go ahead and knock them out. Go ahead, Ash. That is actually one that doesn't. It's just the number of peaceful midterm and presidential elections. Oh, what else? One fifteen, right? Yeah. So it's one eleven on the study guide, but it's one fifteen in the outline. One fifteen is the number to know. Yes. Like who question all? Okay, who and what? what? You remember what we were dealing with when I had asked you about who and what? Oh, shame on y'all. Who, go ahead. It was the Declaration of Independence. Who was it that wrote the Declaration of Independence? Jefferson. Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson is considered the father of the Declaration of Independence. Not the only writer, but the primary one. Excuse me, who was it written about? We the People is actually from the preamble. Be careful. Who was it written about the Declaration of Independence? King. It was written about the king. And if you remember, what word was repeated over and over? Still from the Constitution. Yeah, that's not from the Declaration. What, what was the one word that was repeated over and over? And I had mentioned it. Go ahead, Grant. He. He has endeavored to prevent. He has ob obstructed all of these negative verbs. So they were writing it over and over, and they were making a case against the actions of the king. Who was it written for? You said for like potential allies. Whoa, Christian, yeah. It was actually written for potential allies, and who was it that ultimately bid on that? Right. It was France and maybe to a lesser extent Spain. If you go back and you look, I had mentioned to y'all the idea of who was it written for, and some of y'all had said the people or the wealthy or different things like this. They were already upset, or many of the people probably wouldn't have understood it. I had mentioned to y'all the idea of the king. The king really didn't care how eloquent they were. The king was like the world leader at that point, so the king wasn't really going to be talked out of anything. What was the purpose behind the Declaration of Independence? To form a new government. That would come, but there was something that had to happen before. It's a legal document severing the, the U.S. from Britain. A legal justification for separation from Great Britain. And if you remember, we had gone through life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and that. What, what, was, what was life? Oh, Wednesday or Friday is going to be a bad day. What was life? Go ahead, Grant. I know you want to say it. Oh, you're lucky. It's just a review session. I'd have him turn around and zoom in on you. If you remember, life was the idea that we should be able to live how we wanted. And we had talked about the idea of education or job or marriage or, you know, these kinds of things. What was liberty? Freedom. Freedom. Freedom in what sense? Freedom to do what we wanted. Well, that kind of sounds like life. How is liberty different than that? There were different kinds of freedoms, right? political freedoms, speech, or religion, or vote, or different things like that. And what was the pursuit of happiness? Property. property. The pursuit of happiness was property. There were a couple of articles, maybe several, in fact, that we used that dealt with issues in terms of property. Can y'all remember any of those articles right off? There was one where they took out like, the neighborhood to put like a... Um, like, uh, Shopping center, kind of, and did they say? What state was that in? Anybody? 
No, it wasn't Wyoming, although that we have talked about Wyoming. No, it wasn't North Carolina, not my old home states. It was Connecticut. If you remember, in New London, Connecticut, there was actually the New London Land Development Corporation that had actually talked about uh, using what in order to take the using eminent domain to take the land of the poor residents. And Christian, let me come back to you. What was it that they wanted to build there? Like a big shopping center. They wanted to build a big shopping center. Anything else? Condos, luxury condominiums, shopping center, restaurants, office space, these kinds of things. And, and they wanted to use eminent domain to do this. What was the public purpose that they said they had? Because usually eminent domain is like for roads that everybody can drive on or public parks. It would Go ahead. create more jobs so they could, they could bring more money in. Yeah, more money to the state. It would bring in more tax dollars in terms of jobs, so income, sales, taxes, but maybe most importantly, property tax. And then how would this money be used so that it would benefit everybody? On the roads and schools. It would be used to build roads, schools, better police, better fire. Were they allowed to take the land of the poor folks to develop shopping malls? Yes. yes. Yeah, they were. And this was one of the first times in American history that, in fact, the Supreme Court came out and said, yes, it was legal because the taxes, because of the revenues that would be raised, would be used for a public purpose. I think I had given you, several of you had given me the argument, I should say, oh my gracious, we're taking people's property. It may not be much, but at least it's their property. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are property. Well, it didn't matter because it was the greater good. And I think I had given you the quote, sometimes you've got to break an egg in order to make an omelet. And that's basically what they were doing is they had to crack a few eggs in order to do this. Was that mall and all those properties, were they ever built? No. No, no they're still fighting over this, although they did win in court. And this article, I think, was like from 2005 maybe 2003, it was one of the oldest ones that we use. You mentioned that there were several articles that, that dealt with this. That was the land grab article. Can you think of any others that dealt with your property? The dude had a burning trailer. The dude had a burning oh, trailer. Oh, yes. Yes. What happened with the burning trailer? So the guy didn't pay his taxes for uh, like the firefighting department. Do you remember what state this was in? Anybody? Um, Go ahead. Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah, in the fine state of Tennessee, rural Tennessee, in fact, if you lived outside of the city limits, they required you to pay a tax, pay a tax in order to get fire protection. It was almost kind of like paying insurance so that you would be guaranteed protection if something caught on fire. It was expensive to drive out there. Do you remember how much this tax was? $75. $75. Did the guy, well, what happened to this guy? He didn't pay it. He didn't pay it, and? His house got burned down. Okay, he had a trailer in rural Tennessee. He called the fire department and they, they said, we're not coming? No, they we came and he said, we're not going to take the fire out. <laughs> <laughs> they came, they parked, and they said they would not put out the fire because he had not paid the taxes. Then what happened? He tried to give them the money. And? He wouldn't take it. When did they finally put out the fire? When other people that had actually paid their taxes, when their property was threatened. Not when it actually caught on fire, but when it was threatened to catch on fire. And did, did anybody die? Yeah. I think it was a dog and a cat. Yeah, the pets. I think it was either two dogs and a cat or two cats and a dog or something along these lines, which many of y'all got upset about. In all of the classes, was the, was the idea that they should have put out the fire or was the idea right that in fact they shouldn't have? Every class overwhelmingly said they should have put out the fire in this instance because this was his property. Some of you had actually made the argument, come on, man, if the rule is you got to pay the tax in order to get the protection and you don't pay the tax, then in fact, guess what? You got what you deserved in this instance. There were a couple of others. Real obvious one for your age group. Anybody? Yeah, the cameras in the cars. This was a, a Maryland article, yes? What was it that this University of Southern Maryland was doing? Anybody? With the cameras in the cars. You look guilty. Go ahead. They put um, the cameras in the young people's cars in yeah. order to see how they were driving. Yeah. And then the factory would tell, like, sent the video to the parents. So they how did these cameras work? 
Um, they... No. <laughs> How did the cameras work? They basically um, turn on by like movement. Like movement. Rough movement. Rough movement. Yeah. <laughs> rough movement in the cars. Can anybody explain it a little different than rough? When the car was like, um, yeah, when it was like, unusual movement. Rough, unusual movement. Go ahead, Jizo. When you broke, when you braked. Yeah, yeah, okay. When you use the brakes really hard, or when you accelerated too quickly, or somebody said before, when you swerve kind of thing. In other words, any time the G-forces in the car changed, these cameras would kick on. About how long, anybody, would they run? 30 seconds. About 30 seconds. And then, like you said, this 30-second this clip would go back to the company that ran the cameras, and then what would they do with this clip? They would email the parents. First, they would say that there's an email coming, and then at that point, they would send the actual clip. What kinds of things were they looking for? Like testing the driving. Testing the driving. No, no, testing and driving. Texting and driving. Actually, that's pretty good. They would be looking for that. Anybody else? Yeah, like what? What would they? What would they point out? So the idea was if. Don't eat a Big Mac and drive. And if you're in the 10 o'clock class, that would be Nancy, right? Yeah, but not that I want to call her out on blast. <laughs> okay, so not eating a Big Mac, for example, would be an example of this. Um, texting and driving. Ladies. Ha, ah, Zoe just drops it right there. Putting on makeup and driving. I think it said gangsta driving or, you know, this kind of a thing. I mean, there were a number of things that they had mentioned. But the idea was, was that this camera, it would shoot the front seat so you could see what the people or the driver was, was, was doing. But then there would also oftentimes be something that was in the grill of the car so you could see what the driver saw. Now, why did almost every class not want this camera in their car? invasion of privacy, they could catch you if you were doing something wrong. However, if you were a good driver, why might you want this in the car? It'll help you. Why? How? Because uh, they give you tips on how to improve. Say again? They give you tips on how to improve. It does give you tips on how to improve, but if you're a good driver, how, why would you, you want this? Hit, you get nothing to Actually, well, maybe not necessarily against the insurance well, company. Proved that it wasn't your fault. Exactly. This could validate that you were a good driver. After a year, what was the number, the change, the percentage change? 85. I think it was like 86%, an 86% drop in the number of emails that were sent back to the parents at the end of a year compared to the beginning of the year. And we talked about this idea, if it does make it safer, this is freedom versus order, right? The idea of your being free, your property, you being able to do what you want in your car versus order, because many of you kind of had felt like the idea that if I'm being watched, I'm probably going to drive better. So did you want to be free and more at risk for being in an accident? Or did you want to be order, meaning you were safer, but you gave up a certain degree of your, your independence or your sovereignty? And like I said, the accident, not the accidents, but actually the number of videos that were emailed back to the parents dropped dramatically at the end of that year. There was a couple of other articles, but let me go back to the terms, and, and we'll deal a few more with these. Can you see anything else that jumps up here that uh, you've got questions about from the first chapter? Go ahead, Zoe. Um, I'm just looking at things that I don't, just it, nothing pops up when I think okay. about it. What about initiative? Initiative. Do you all remember what an initiative was? There was initiative, referendum, and recall. Go ahead, Amir. What was initiative? You have the signs to, um, I guess, fire a um, politician in the state, like the governor. That's a recall. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, it's when the citizens, through like collecting signatures, are able to put like a law that the people can vote on on election day on the ballot. This was an example of direct democracy. And if you remember with direct democracy, the people were basically ruling themselves. What I had asked in every single class was, okay, how does a law get passed? And many of you said, you're going to have to take it to a legislator. You're going to have to take it to the state capitol or to Congress or something along these lines. Well, an initiative is where people themselves draft a bill, and then they'll go out and they'll collect signatures of registered voters. And when they collect the right percentage, which is usually maybe 3%, 3, 4, 5%, right in that range, they 